just about consolidating our gains in the first tick on the index. The MPC decided unanimously to keep the policy repo rate unchanged. The Nifty now at 18767, 777 has been the high, we're practically there. It's around 86 points off from the day's high. Markets are taking a bit of a breather, right? I mean, I think it's pretty clear that uh, that is the case, uh, but nothing large, uh, you know. <clears throat> off the highs, but not really going anywhere. We're around 85, which means about 20 points off the uh, day's low. 18,645 is where the index will uh, be ending. That's just under half a percent cut. Hello and welcome to Markets Today, the show where we track six hours of the day's trading action in five headlines. I am Reema Tendulkar, and these are the headlines for the day. Financial stocks slide after RBI status quo policy. Sensex and the Nifty declined half a percent, snapping a four-day winning streak. The 10-year bond yield spike, breaching 7 percent. RBI governor says the goal is to bring inflation down to 4 percent as the Monetary Policy Committee announces a status quo policy, maintains the stance and withdrawal of accommodation. The unexpectedly hawkish policy effectively pours cold water on rate cut hopes this year. Oil marketing companies end with sharp cuts. The government is likely to nudge oil marketing companies to cut fuel prices as they are close to normalcy on under recoveries. Sources tell CNBC TV18 that oil marketing companies can pass on some benefits to consumers within the bounds of legitimacy. In his first interview since taking charge, Hero Motor CEO Niranjan Gupta says the board wants him to shift gears and win in new segments like premium bikes and electric vehicles. Adds, the recent VRS scheme will enable a talent refresh. JSW Group boss Sanjay Jindal says they're looking at almost doubling the steel capacity to 50 million tons by 2030. Jindal tells CNBC TV18 the government has projected the need for 250 million tons in the next seven years. Adds that JSW, as the leading steel maker, will have to double their growth to keep their market share. JSW steel stock spikes 4%. And here's a lineup of what we have for you in store today. It's a packed show as always in market opinion. Sanjeev Prasad, Kotak Institutional Equities, in Big Corporate Voices, Niranjan Gupta of Hero Moto and Sajan Jindal of JSW Steel. But straight to the day's market action, the Lal Street failed to hold on to the intraday recovery to snap a four-day winning streak. The Nifty and the Sensex fell about a half a percent. The mid-caps fell in line with the blue chips. However, financials underperformed after RBI's status quo policy. Prashant is here with the details. A little bit of profit taking after what has been a breathless run, a dash to all-time high. So not quite making it and uh, halting before that. And today we saw about a 100-odd point cut. Actually, I mean, the market started fine. Starting about 11 o'clock, you had the first cut. Uh, and then starting 2 o'clock, you had, you had another decline, which uh, took us on the Nifty at least to the day's lowest point. But the cut is less than half a percent, uh, mind you. Bank Nifty lost a little bit more, but not by much. Uh, let's just start with the, the losses on the Nifty. So Kotak was a large influence on the downside. Uh, there was also uh, names like Grasim, Sun Pharma, Tata Consumer and Tech Mahindra, which came under selling pressure. Mid caps and small cap indices, small caps especially has been the star of uh, the last so many days now. Uh, and there, there was about a 1% pullback that we had. Uh, so let me just detail the losers out for you. Suzlon saw pullback. Most of these had done quite a bit on the upside. IEX was news-related and most of the sell-off came in the last hour of trade. But Varun Beverages, Indian Hotels, HBL Power, Colte Patel, Nucleus, Newland, Westlife, these are pullbacks after very sharp up moves. Oil marketing companies were also lower after our story. HPCL, a case in point. Now, in the broader space, there were gainers as well. By the way, the list of volume-led gainers was still far longer uh, as compared to volume-led losers, and that is heartening to see even on a day like today. Paytm, Dixon, JBM Auto, Car Trade, these two names, last two names have been doing very well recently. HEG, Gati, and Snowman Logistics were some of the other gainers. On the Nifty, support comes in a little lower from where we left off today at about 18,531. Not very much by way of data today, only the Fed meeting next week. And in the U.S., I think what will be watched if, uh, is, is the rally which has been broadening out there, if that continues or not. Back to you. Thank you very much uh, for that. Now let's get to some market opinions. Sanjeev Prasad of Kotak Institutional Equity says that the mood in the market is very bullish on the back of improved profitability and a macro environment. He also lays out his view on new age companies. 
clearly the mode of the market is very bullish. As of now, what we are seeing is the market is latching on to any positive news uh, in the short term. So we are seeing the market getting very excited by improvement in profitability, but ignoring the weak volume part. Same way the market is very excited on the macro improvement, but which is genuine. You know, we have seen the big decline inflation, interest rates are probably peaked out, current account is looking very reasonable. So some ground for optimism. But at the same time, the market simply does not want to look at any negatives which may play out, which is, you know, maybe a much more muted recovery in, in consumption demand, uh, which so far has been, you know, pretty weak. Uh, and some of the medium term challenges which come from the disruption side, anyway, that's two, four, four, four years down the line. So people don't want to focus it as of now. Clear message from the management has been, in most cases, has been that the focus has shifted to profit rather than growth. So if the market, you know, narrative is focus on profitability. Uh, yeah, I mean, the companies are in position to deliver that. You know, you'll stop growth for some time, you know, you will become profitable. And to be honest, the company has also been working fairly, fairly hard on improving the profitability. So I wouldn't be surprised something like Zomato in maybe four to six quarter times, you know, start becoming actually profitable on, on the food delivery side. Let's get to the second headline then. And this is the big story this evening. The Reserve Bank's Monetary Policy Committee announced a status quo in what was a largely expected move. But what was unexpected was the hawkish tone on inflation. Before we get to that, here are the highlights. The MPC unanimously decided to keep the repo rate unchanged at 6.5%. It maintained the stance on withdrawal of accommodation with five members in agreement and only Jayant Varma casting a dissenting vote. Meanwhile, the estimate for FI24 inflation has been lowered by 10 basis points to 5.1%. Governor Das said inflation remains within the target range. He asserted that there will be no compromise on the 4% inflation target. Given the uncertainty, <laughs> we need to maintain Arjuna's eye on the, infl on the evolving inflation scenario. Let me re-emphasize that headline inflation still remains above the target and being within the tolerance band is not enough. Our goal is to achieve the target of 4% going forward. As Mahatma Gandhi had said, the ideal must not be lowered. The continuation of stance of withdrawal of accommodation should be seen from this perspective. Totally so far, about 1,80,000 crores 1.8 lakh crores or 2,000 rupee notes have come back. And uh, this is roughly about 50% uh, of the 2,000 notes which were in circulation on 31st March. About 85% uh, of the 2,000 rupee notes are coming back as deposits into bank accounts. Going forward, I would, through you, you know, appeal to everyone not to rush or not to go to the bank in a panic. Okay, that's uh, the governor speaking. Let's uh, get to our colleague, Lata Venkatesh, who joins in with her editor's take. Lata. I would call it an unexpected hawkish pause. Other things are expected. You know, the rate was not expected to be changed. Pause continued as expected, as well the very wording of the stance uh, is, uh, has not been changed. That's what our poll showed. But there were minor hopes here and there that the stance would be withdrawal of accommodation, but some softening. No, there is no scope at all. In fact, uh, they have actually been hawkish. And I'll tell you two or three reasons why I think it is a hawkish policy. One, almost everyone expected that the inflation forecast would be revised down to either 5%, that was the conservatives, and the Dove saying it could be 4.9 or 4.8. Lo and behold, it is 5.1. You know, not even come to 5, which means the first quarter, the inflation forecast clearly has come under RBI's expectation by 50 basis points. They've just arithmetically removed that and given you. They have not assumed that the momentum of slower inflation will go on to the second half, which is what many people assumed. And the fact that they haven't assumed that clearly makes this a hawkish uh, uh, pause. Uh, the other point is the repeated insistence that we are not done if we just come to 6% because the target for CPI is 4% plus or minus 2%. You know, coming under 6, you are within the target was how the market was interpreting. 
by saying it, I think about half a dozen times that you have to, uh, we want to be uh, CPI to be aligned to the target of 4% was very clearly a very, very uh, hawkish uh, stance from the Reserve Bank governor. And uh, even on liquidity, you know, there were instant, there have been instances when rates have been, uh, you know, when yields are falling in the bond market and banks dropped yields uh, or dropped uh, lending and deposit rates just by five basis points or something. Reserve Bank just swooped and sucked out all the liquidity, which is coming in probably because of the 2000 rupee notes in part. So the fact that, and they said it, what will be your response when banks cut? We, you saw our liquidity response was the answer, which means we won't tolerate yields or rate softening. So I would therefore say it is hawkish. There was just one line which I would say is dovish where uh, when asked, are you not going to change till inflation gets to 4%, uh, the answer was we want CPI to be aligned to 4%, not at 4%. So that was a bit of a giveaway, which means they may probably change their stance before you get to 4 Beyond that, this was hawkish and how. Lada, thank you very much for that. A hawkish pause by the RBI and that put some pressure on the markets today, particularly rate sensitives like the real estate index, which fell more than a percent. Let's now get to the third headline. The government expects oil marketing companies to reduce fuel prices. Sources say the expectations come on the back of the health of the oil marketing companies being close to normalcy on under recoveries. Although companies like HPCL booked a net loss of almost 9,000 crore rupees last year, PPCL, HPCL, IOC all ended with sharp cuts in trade. Sapna joins in. Sapna, can you tell us what you're picking up? Well, government sources of the view that uh, oil marketing companies, their financial health is uh, slowly inching back to normalcy or they are close to normalcy. It could just be possible that uh, most of their petrol and diesel under recoveries, uh, you know, uh, that situation may not be there uh, completely, so to speak. Of course, some bit will always remain, but there could be some scope uh, within legitimate bounds for them to pass on some benefit uh, to the common man, to the common consumer. The government's aim always, of course, has been to maintain stable fuel prices, uh, you know, with a downward trend. So uh, this could be a kind of a soft nudge to OMCs to explore the possibility uh, of a fuel price cut. Uh, from the OMC's perspective, I think a couple of things that we need to keep in mind. Uh, FR23 was a rough year for them, though of course uh, governments also expect uh, uh, the ongoing current quarter also to be a good one on the back of a good uh, Q4. Uh, so some of the companies are still not out of the woods. HPCL reported a net loss in FR23, so that could be one factor to keep in mind. Apart from that, importantly, the uh, rupee dollar exchange rate and the uh, Saudi announcement uh, of, uh, of a production cut. These two factors are going to be important as far as uh, pricing decisions are concerned. Uh, you know, there is no response yet from the OMCs on this front, so I think we have to keep an eye out on that. But the government in the meanwhile, uh, from its end, their messaging is quite unequivocal at this point in time. Sapna, thank you very much for that. And speaking on the fuel price cut, brokerage firm Morgan Stanley said oil marketing companies are on track to recover their losses and current fuel prices can offer a buffer of a 2 to 5% price cut. In more stock specific news, Tata Motors slipped over 1.5%. At an investor meet, the company said that its targets will be to reach double digit EBITDA margins in the medium term. Sonia joins in with more. Well, thanks a lot for that. So Tata Motors was in focus after the investor meet that was held yesterday. Now Tata Motors spoke about its foray into the EV battery business in a big way. How Agatha's energy storage solutions will be developing capabilities uh, to deliver batteries across a range of electric vehicles. They aspire to be at the forefront of the global battery manufacturing industry and supply chain optimization is the goal that Tata Motors has. They will also be establishing a cathode active material facility adjacent to the Giga factory to ensure uninterrupted supply of key materials for manufacturing of electric vehicles. They are also working on a solid state sodium batteries for the EV bus segment in the medium term. Uh, the company has also stuck on to its uh, medium term target to reach double digit EBITDA margins. Tata, um, Nomura put out a note on Tata Motors where they said that the company has various levers to gain further market share and the new product launches like the Curve, Sierra and the Avinia uh, along with the network expansion will definitely help them aid their market share. Sonia, thank you very much for that. Tata Communication was also on our radar.
This is after the company held an investor day yesterday. And the key takeaway from the investor day is the company plans to double its data revenues. Now, data revenues were 14,000 crore last year. Now, the company says the data revenues will double by FI27. Now, this will require the data revenues to grow every year by 19%. Now, according to analysts, this is a bit aggressive. Let me tell you one reason. Because the past track record of Tata Communications, over the last four years, their data business revenue growth has been 6, 6.5%. So the question is, how can a company, how can the, your business, which has been growing at 6, 6.5%, suddenly grow at 19% for the, <laughs> sorry, for the next three years? So brokerages are not convinced, which is why Kotak is saying, well, it's not going to be a 19%, it's going to be 11% growth. ICSA security is at 12%. Secondly, the company also said that consolidated margins will be 23 to 25%. But in FI24, margins could drop below the lower end of the guided band, because of the switch acquisition and back-ended headcount additions. Now, Kotak has downgraded the stock to a reduce from an ad, though our target price stands at 13.50, so lower than where the stock currently is. MK also downgrades the stock to a hold from a buy rating because they're saying the valuations are elevated and plus the stock has rallied in the last one month. ICSA Security, on the other hand, maintains a buy rating and their target price uh, suggests an upside 1,665 from current levels. Get into a break. Uh, we'll come back in Jiffy with the other headlines. Welcome back. You're still with us on Markets Today. Let's go to the rest of the headlines that we're tracking for you. The fourth headline is, in his first interview since taking charge, Hero Motor CEO Niranjan Gupta uh, has said the board expects him to shift gears and focus on the performance of new segments like premium bikes and electric vehicles. Gupta told CNBC TV 18, that 10% of their employees have taken voluntary retirement, saying that every company needs to go through a talent churn to make space for the future. From time to time, every company has to go through refreshing talent churn in order to ensure that the talent is future ready and future fit. Overall, around 10% of the staff took the VRS and that paves the way for the future. Uh, in terms of building the organization, much simpler organization, de-layered, simplified, which will ensure that the speed at which we move will be much faster than what we have been doing. Given the framework of EV that's changing rapidly, whether it's in terms of customer, whether it's in terms of uh, regulatory, or the battery side, the cost side, uh, or the fame that, that everyone is aware of, I can only say that don't go by the current leadership in the market. It's going to change dramatically over the next three years. And typically, we have given the guidance of between 1,000 to 1,500 crores a year. That's the range of CapEx guidance. So therefore, more and more investment out of this pie uh, will be towards an EV and premium. And the fifth headline for the day, JSW Steel closed over 2.5% higher after Chairman Managing Director Sajjan Jindal said they are looking at almost doubling their steel capacity to 50 million tons by 2030. Speaking to CNBC TV 18 from Monte Carlo, Jindal said that the government has projected a need for 250 million tons in the next seven years. Now, JSW Steel, as the leading steel maker, will have to double their growth to keep their market share. Right now, we are at 28 million tons, and our idea is to uh, go over 50 million tons by uh, uh, 2030. Uh, which means that we will be increasing our capacity by 40 percent, not if not uh, 50 percent, or if doubling, um, at least 40 percent. That means 22, 23 million tons capacity we will be adding. Uh, the thumb rule in steel industry is that for every uh, million tons, you have to invest uh, at least a uh, billion dollars, if not more. Uh, so, therefore, we are talking about close to $25 billion in the next seven years. In more stock-specific news, Gati surged in trade after the company reported its monthly business update for May. The total volumes have increased by 8%. Vivek is here with a snapshot of the May operational data. Vivek? 
Well, absolutely right. You know, it's a strong operational update as far as the month of May is concerned. And what the company has said is that the total volumes for May, uh, now this includes both the surface as well as the air express segments, has actually come in at 98 kilotons. Uh, and it's gone up almost 9% on a month-on-month -month basis. On a year-on-year -year basis, optically, you know, the growth looks subdued. It's up 1% on a year-on-year -year basis. But however, you know, the company says that the base quarter, that is May of uh, 2022, actually had multiple exceptional items on the back of which, you know, the base quarter was very strong. What the company is saying is that despite, you know, such a strong base, uh, there has been some growth which they say is quite positive. Now, what they're saying is that May volumes continuing to show an improving trend, August quite well, and they believe that, you know, that the super hub that has come up at Bivendi is something that is also aiding to the volumes. Overall, strong operational update, which is what is keeping the stock quite active in the session today. Thank you for that. ATM gained 6% on the back of a positive brokerage note from Bofa Securities. Meanwhile, PB Fintech slipped after Bofa downgraded the stock to an underperform, citing very high valuation. Sonia is here with the details. Well, thanks a lot for that. As you rightly pointed out, Bofa Securities has upgraded Paytm while they have downgraded PP, PB Fintech. So let's talk about that. They've upgraded Paytm to a buy and raised the target price to 855 from 780 earlier. They speak about how the revenue momentum is very strong and that's something that's expected to continue going ahead. They also talk about how the operating leverage has some room to surprise on the upside and the competition is limited at the moment. The big um, trigger really for Paytm is digitization in the payments infrastructure space and that is something that can continue to drive the earnings growth for um, Paytm. Also, the company is sitting on a strong cash balance, which is always a good thing. Now, on PB Fintech, it's a valuation argument here. They have downgraded the stock to an underperform from a buy with a target price of 600 rupees. They talk about how the path to achieve 1,000 crores of net income is well flagged off and their growth is slowing down on the back of a high base. They also talk about how the company is good, but the improving profitability is something that has already been priced into the the stock. So if you look at the valuations, the currently the stock is trading at um, 6x FY25 compared to Paytm at 3x. Any higher than expected competition from peers like Insurance Deco is something that could derail their growth further. Thank you, Sonia. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Markets Today. Thank you very much for watching.